Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial on Godot 4. In the previous episode, we learned about um, simple auto tile uh, using Wang sets and blob sets. This video, we're going to learn about auto tile procedural generation using a blob tile set. And as you can see uh, in front of us here, this is a a world that's been generated by the game itself. So that's what procedural generation is. It takes random noise and it places uh, land based on some sort of logic, right? So if the noise is A, place land. If the noise is B, place water, something like that. And it randomly generates that noise. Now this is a world size of 512 by 512. And as you can see, there are oceans and there is land. Uh, this is a very simple version, so let's get right into the code. Close that. Go ahead and open up a new project. Uh, we'll just call it Simple Auto Tile Procedural Generation. Feel free to call anything you want. And place this here. Create that. And the resources is on my GitHub. I'll put a link down below. It's under Simple Auto Tile Procedural Generation. It's just a simple tile map or tile set. And let's go ahead. So one of the reasons we'd use uh, procedural generation is so we don't have to build the worlds manually. And then that way, you can have a lot of randomness and uh, you could technically have infinite worlds as well. Um, kind of like Minecraft, that's procedurally generated. As you're exploring to the end of your vision, it'll generate more territory. So if we click 2D scene, rename that to world and go ahead and add a tile map to it. And on view, if we just click tile map again, on view right, if we click tile set, empty, new tile set. And if we go to our file system, right click, open in file manager, and go ahead and just bring in the simple tile map. Okay, and now if you click tile set, and at the bottom, tile set, uh, drag in your simple tile map. and it's a blob tile set so we can use the blob format if you watched the previous video if not uh, we're going to draw it now anyways on the right if we select our terrain and then create a new terrain set and we'll call this land just like that we're good and now uh, once you've got that we've got trains let me select the color here just like that yep now let's go ahead and draw so click paint Trains, train set zero, and then land. And then if you control shift and drag from the top left corner to the bottom right here, I'll drag all of that in. And let's just quickly draw it out. And don't worry if you make mistakes, you can right click and just get rid of them, just like that. And the more you guys uh, draw this layout, the more you'll remember it, like I do. Uh, feel free to pause the screen and have a look at that. Maybe I'll change the color so it's a bit more visible. Hopefully that's a bit better. Um, and then just to test to see if it actually is working, click tile map, trains, and select the land, and just draw it out. 
looks fine to me if we get and then let's just go ahead and just erase that so let's get right into the code um, click the attach new script here we'll do an empty now the way we're going to do the code here let's uh, first get some variables set up so we'll do some constants now we're going to do our map size here and we'll go ahead and do is equal to um, a vector 2 and then let's just do 1 to 8 by 1 to 8 for now a uh, smaller world size just so when we're loading and once so we've got that and then we also need our tile map so if we do var sorry on ready var and then we just say tile map is equal to tile map like that Okay, so now that we've got that, let's go ahead and type uh, func ready. And we're going to run it, create a function. So, function, I'm just going to call it make blob map. Or we could even just call it uh, generate world, might be better naming. And then let's create that function now generate world. And what we'll go ahead and do is we're going to use um, fast noise light. And I believe that's similar to Godot 3 has something called a simplex noise, I think it was something like that. And it, it'll generate random noise for us and we can we can take those random noise, the numbers, and start placing the auto tile map based on specific numbers. So if we generate an now var noise is equal to fast noise light dot new. And then we're gonna create a um, we're gonna give this a seed. And we'll do randi. So randi will give us a random number, but just before we do that, let's just give it a generic number for now. Here we just call 100. And the reason we're going to do that is so while while we're testing, uh, the world will stay the same every single time. If we do randi now, if we notice something wrong in one world, it might not be wrong in the other one. So it's going to confuse us. Um, and then we want to create a cells variable, which is an empty array. And I'll explain why in a second. So let's loop through our world uh, map size. We've got an error here. Sorry, on um, Godot 4, you need to put the at symbol when you do on ready. Okay, and then so we do 4x in map size dot x, and then 4y in map size dot y. So this is going through every single uh, number within. Uh, our map size and we're going to generate a uh, world on a size of 1 to 8 by 1 to 8 and then let's go ahead and say var um, a is equal to noise dot get noise 2d and we're going to put in x and y here and now uh, this value here oops in here so this this is going to be our value our random number and we're going to determine whether we place auto or land based on this value here think of it as a giant array of random numbers and the array size 1 to 8 by 1 to 8 and you're basically just checking through every single value and you're saying okay if it's equal to this value then place land else place water and the value we're going to determine here is we're going to say const um, land cap is equal to 0 0.3. We'll just pick 0 0.3 for now. Um, might change it later on. And then we say if a is less than the land cap, then go ahead and place um, append to our cells variable here. And we're going to append a vector 2 of x and y. Yep, that's all we need for now. Now in Godot 4, the way to actually connect our um, auto tiles together is using um, the tile maps function set cells train connect, and we provide the layer we want it on. So you, if you have multiple layers, um, it just goes by the index. So first layer is zero. Um, if you've got a second one, it'll be one. Then we provide a cells array, which is the one we created here. And then the next one we want to train set. In our case, it's also zero. You might have multiple train sets. And then the train is also zero in this case. Okay. 
So this will generate our world. So if we click play, select current, save. Hopefully the code should be right there. So what this will do is it's going to create a square of 1 to 8 by 1 to 8 and place our tile map that we generated. It's going to place the land tile map. Okay, let's see. Ooh, we've, so point underscore here, you copied me like that. Try that again. And at the moment we're keeping it basic, so we've only got one noise object. But if you're gonna create a bigger world um, and you want, let's say, deep water, shallow water, um, different levels of biomes, uh, then you're going to actually want more than one noise object. So as you can see, it's placed our land, uh, we can't really move anywhere. And you can see that green is our tile map. And what we're saying is our land belongs here. And the black spot could be anything else. That could be other terrain, that could be water. In this case, we're gonna make it water. Now to make it water, it's very simple. Just go ahead and just type else. Uh, what we're gonna do is do tile map dot set cell and we're going to say on layer zero the coordinates is our vector two x and y right the source id is zero the source id is i'll show you what the source id is our source id is this one here this uh tile set because you may have multiple tile sets right and then if we go comma again it's going to want the atlas coordinates now atlas coordinates is this value here if you hover over you see it says atlas coordinates zero and five that's our water object so we're going to say vector two zero comma five and what else is one alternative tiles which is for zero default is zero anyways let's see let's put vector two so if we run this again This should now fill in the gray spots with water tiles. And um, the bigger the world, the longer it'll take to generate. So there you go. So now you can see our world actually has the tile map and the water spots. So now uh, what we want to do is just create a player so we can just explore it. Um, so go ahead and create a new scene at the top. Click other node, click character body 2D and it's going to want um, a collision shape and we'll add a sprite as well so let's add a sprite first add the collision shape 2d and let's also slap a camera in here so we can move around with it in our collision shape 2d just give it a rectangle i uh, don't worry about setting it and then just put the icon into sprite 2d so if you look at that and that's our player here call it player give it a quick quick script we'll play it GD, let's just use um, object empty, it's fine. Right. And for this one, um, let's go ahead and declare a constant speed on the top here. We we'll just say that's 1500. And then func physics process delta. And go ahead and put uh, velocity. We're just gonna do a very basic uh, movement script here. It's straight out of the documentation and Godot. So we get axis and we just do UI left and UI right. And then we'll just do just copy paste this again. And instead of X is Y, instead of left is up, and instead of right is down. And then we just say velocity is equal to velocity dot, um, dot normalized multiplied by our speed and then we just move and slide like that so that's our player script and let's just drag our player in our player screen just like that and now if we play this
here we go. So we can now move around and you can have a look at the world. You might feel like this is too much land. So you can play around with the settings a bit. Go into world tile map. This is land cap. If you, the lower this number is, the less land there is. The higher the number, the more land. So if you put 0.1, um, and let's even make it a bigger world. Let's say 512 or 512. It'll take a bit longer to run, but that's fine. And in the next video, I'll actually create another procedural generation, but this time with uh, multiple biomes rather than single biome. Because uh, at the moment, you've just got grass and water. You may want grass, sand, forest, that kind of stuff. And we'll also, uh, probably not in the next video, but we'll look at um, generating like structures too, like um, trees and rock and mountains as well, procedurally generate those. And even uh, towns, like if you've got an overworld map, you might want a town. If we have a look at this now, we've got a lot more water, we've got a much bigger map. Look at this, we've got practically oceans here. And the map is much bigger now. And you'll probably notice in some areas you'll see like gray spots and that's mainly because um, of how the tile map is um, and because we're keeping the basic we're not really putting the water underneath the uh, land we're kind of just uh, putting it next to it uh, but in the next video we'll look into that as well uh, so thank you guys for watching uh, links will be down in the description below um, I'll also link to uh, another youtuber who's actually made a procedural generation with without auto tiles just simple with uh, just normal tiles and I'll put any relevant information down below too thanks for watching guys bye